Welcome back to another video as part of the AP Psychology course. This is lesson number 16 on the auditory system. So this lesson falls under the sensation and perception unit. It is worth pointing out that generally most textbooks are going to give more uh, weight towards the visual system and uh, visual related processes. If you look in your own textbook, there's probably many more pages associated with the eye and the visual processes than there are for the auditory system or olfactory or gustatory system. That being said, I would rank the auditory system as the second one to know in terms of importance just behind the visual system. So this video is going to explain some of the parts of the auditory system and then a few theories about how we hear. Uh, to begin, our new stimulus moving away from vision is now going to be sound. And so there's three properties of sound that we want to be familiar with and then the perceived properties. So we have amplitude, frequency, and purity. Amplitude is going to be uh, measured with decibels, and this is ultimately how we decipher how loud something can be. So generally, uh, if something increases by about 10 decibels, it's going to be increased in volume or in loudness by about 100%. So uh, if you have something that's fairly quiet at 20 decibels, at 30 decibels, it's actually doubled in loudness. We also have frequency, which we're going to use to detect pitch. So it might be a low frequency, really low tone, or it could be a really high pitch frequency. Frequency is uh, showing wavelengths, and so this is going to be measured by hertz, which is a measurement for frequency. Humans have the capability of hearing from anywhere between 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. In my own experience with many students looking at some different hearing tests, most of them uh, stop hearing about 16,000 hertz although it could just be that the speakers in my room can't really play higher noise so uh, anyways generally humans can hear anywhere from 20 to 20,000 Hertz then lastly we have timber so timber is basically going to be showing you a difference in perceived sound and so if you take a person who can play a C note on a piano versus on a violin that difference in perceived sound that you hear is going to be the timber so obviously you know that the sound off the piano or the violin is not exactly the same even though it is playing the same note so again that's the timber uh, just referencing a chart here, looking at the damage that uh, some of the uh, decibel increases can cause. So the physical pain threshold for how loud something can be is at 125 decibels. Generally, young male uh, teenagers, particularly when they first start driving, typically are more likely to experience uh, damage to their hearing. This is because they tend to listen to loud music on a much greater level than most other people, including young female drivers. Or adults. So if you take a look at the Vuvuzela here, which is at 127 decibels, it is uh, right behind the handgun at 140 decibels. So it seems like, you know, there's only a 13 decibel difference, but within that 13 decibels, the handgun is basically uh, twice as damaging as the Vuvuzela. So again, just something to consider. In terms of the sensory processing in your ear, there's three components. You have the external ear, which is going to contain its own parts, the middle ear, and then the inner ear. I'm going to run through these quickly now just to kind of show you, but overall, for the process of sound, the exterior part of your ear is going to funnel in uh, sound waves. This is going to help then vibrate the tympanic membrane or the eardrum. When the eardrum is stimulated, this is going to cause the smallest bones in your body to vibrate, and this is going to help produce waves in a fluid to stimulate inner ear hair cells and ultimately this is going to be the path that sound will take in order for you to detect it. So first we have the external ear. Two parts of the external ear you want to be familiar with are the pina. That's going to be this cone-like piece on the side of your head. You've got two of them. And then the eardrum. The eardrum is trying to vibrate in response to sound waves which get funneled into the eardrum through the auditory canal by the pina. That's the external ear. Then we have the middle ear, and so the middle ear is home to the three tiniest bones in the body, collectively known as the ossicles, kind of like icicles, but with an O. And so these three bones are the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. And these are going to vibrate and transmit uh, the vibrations of the eardrum inward, going towards the inner ear. The inner ear is home to the cochlea, the most important part of your ear. And so this is probably on the level of the retina to the eye in terms of if we're comparing the visual system and the auditory system. So the cochlea is a fluid-filled coil tunnel that contains the receptors for hearing. And sound is going to first enter into the cochlea through the oval window. 
Uh, this is going to come from the vibrations again of the ossicles. The cochlea is divided up into an upper and lower chamber by the basilar membrane, which are uh, is then lined with these hair cells. These hair cells are your auditory receptors. You have nowhere near as many auditory receptors as you do for vision. So vision, you have somewhere in the range of 100 to 130 million cells, be it rods or cones. But with hair cells, you're looking at only thousands of cells. So much different than vision. And ultimately, once these hair cells are stimulated, the information is transmitted to the auditory nerve, and then it's routed to the thalamus, which will then direct any sound to the temporal lobe, which is your auditory cortex. Since we're on the notion of the inner ear, I think it's good to mention that inside of the inner ear, you're also home to the semicircular canals. And the semicircular canals are going to help basically monitor the vestibular system. The vestibular system is your body's sense of awareness for balance and movement. And so this is what the vestibular system is going to monitor. And these sensations of having experience for this is found in the semicircular canals. It is possible to receive a question on the AP exam asking about what part of the body helps regulate the vestibular system. And so this is going to be the semicircular canals found in the inner ear. Most likely your textbook probably is not organizing this information in this unit, but why not just go ahead and share it with you now. Finally, we get to two theories about hearing and just how we are going to perceive any auditory noise. And so there's two theories, the place theory and frequency theory. The place theory is ultimately going to argue that the hair cells in the basilar membrane are going to operate independently and that different hair cells are going to respond to different frequencies. Well, this is true for the case of a high pitch, but it doesn't necessarily explain how you're going to detect a low pitch frequency. So we move to the frequency theory, which says that the basilar membrane is actually going to operate as one and vibrate in unison. Now, both of these theories have some validity, but they're not fully, totally correct. So what's actually going to happen is, for the frequency theory, the hair cells along the basilar membrane are not actually independent. They do vibrate together. For the place theory, waves will peak at particular places, but it's going to depend on the frequency of the sound. So that's ultimately what's valid from those two theories. Combined, they pretty much will make up our ability to hear. Now, there's a couple auditory illusions on YouTube that you can check out, and I definitely recommend checking them out. If you just Google search some of these terms, the scary interrogation chamber or the auditory illusion um, for the virtual barbershop, you can get a good sense of kind of some weird tricks for sound localization that your brain plays with you. So if you Google search those, um, all you need is a set of uh, earbuds, and then you have to close your eyes and then listen to the uh, instructions and just kind of relax and then listen. And you'll hear a lot of interesting things for the virtual barbershop. Uh, actually, I don't want to spoil it for you, so just go ahead and check it out if you have some time. Uh, otherwise, that's the end of this video, so thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.